just doing a bit of a follow-up on my last video, thinking of getting a Revo Point Pop 2 scanner, I ask that you reconsider. Was, uh, <laughs> it wasn't very fair of me, I'll be honest, uh, I was definitely miffed. So I will, you know, concede that I, I put this video up before I really knew how to use a scanner. And, uh, as many of you had pointed out, wasn't uh, wasn't really the way that it should be doing. I'm doing it quite wrong. So I'll just bring up a couple points that some of you had said. And while I'm talking about this, obviously you can see what I've got set up here. It's a small object. It's light in color. And it is simple. So I figure I tried doing some advanced stuff. It wasn't going so good. It's clear I need practice. So if I'm going to practice, I may as well have uh, some modicum of success. While that's going, I'm going to read a couple of comments. And uh, uh, thank just uh, I'll just thank a few people, you know, uh, for some of the advice because I've gotten absolutely outstanding advice from uh, from pretty much every single one of you out there, and I am very grateful for that. FPS Chris says, uh, most people use the turntable with a bla black background. For black object spray they, with uh, light misting of baby powder spray, you can wash it off later. I think in handheld mode, you need to use markers. I think that's why it loses tracking. My POP2 is on order, but I have a larger 3K HPSLS. Similar idea. Shiny and black objects are the hardest to scan, but the powder helps Gold Bond makes one too, but it's a little greasy in my opinion. I've seen great results with the Pop 2. Thanks Chris, really appreciate that. You'll notice that at times there's not enough markers on there, which to me that seems kind of crazy because you see how many are on there. Nonetheless, I gotta put more on, which should improve my chances of a good scan. Well, that done and said, said and done, back to the comments. Faceless Fan says he's got one himself, still learning, I'm in the same boat. I've actually had mine for a few months now, I gave up on it, just this week picked it back up to try it again. Black garbage bags I've found work good as a backdrop. A good LED RGB photography lamp works good. Turntables are your friend. Having patience and practice are the key, I believe. These would be my opinion to improve scans. Let me know if you have any tips to use. Thank you very much, Faceless. I will take that one to heart. I've actually just ordered an RGB photography lamp on your recommendation. And uh, it's not going to be in the video, but uh, I just wanted to say thank you again for that. Uh, Terraform, perhaps you learned to use the scanner before making suggestions based on your lack of scanning ability. That is fair. <laughs> that is fair. Arthur Arcturus says, this scanner is good for scanning very tiny objects that sit smoothly on a rotating disc with markers on it. Due to narrow field of view and flow frame rate, it is very hard to align frames properly, so it will produce a very nice and detailed point clouds when you try to rotate around an object to scan the whole surface of the object. Things go crazy. If you think you will buy this and start scanning things and be productive, you got another thing coming. Just remember, it came from China. It did. It did. Triple X Buddy says, I know your frustration, but today I found the way to get, in my case, the original pop scanner to work after 18 months. Don't use a phone. It's not up to the job. I bought a new Android tablet to scan with. It still had problems, but there's a solution. Part of your problem is too much light. I have a portable photo studio that I've made blackouts for the sides. Less light is best. Use a turntable, and on black or dark objects, use stickers. Second, use adjustments to get the best image in the left-hand panes. Then start your scan. Make adjustments first in the top left pane, then the bottom left one. Once you have decent images, you're almost done. Home and dry. Do not hold the scanner in your hand. I mounted mine on a tripod. It's made a big difference. You should be able to, from there, get a decent scan. Also, make sure your power supply can supply 5 volts up to 3 amps. Though it doesn't need that much, I found my 2 amp PSU was just not cut in the mustard. Hope this comment helps others out there. Thank you very much. Uh, as a Faceless Fan had uh, said earlier, he mentioned that he had a LED RGB photography lamp. I've got one on the way now, and uh, I'll probably try to see if I can use 
something like that to maybe help me scan a dark object. And then I'll maybe make a follow-up to the follow-up. But as you can tell, I'm not really fast at uploading. It's probably not going to happen for some time. I'm a little lazy. I can go on, but I won't. I didn't really like that other angle I was getting, so... And also really didn't want to stand that way, so I'm just going to do it this way, because I need to kind of, I kind of want to make sure that uh, when I'm done scanning it, that, uh, yeah, you know, it knows it's a hollow piece. Because if it doesn't know it's a hollow piece, then obviously, you know, I could have just finished the scan with what I already had. But I want to make sure to get also the, the proper diameter on the inside, as well as that, uh, sort of that sunken taper, I don't know what you want to call it. You know, just get the, just get the angles, just get the angles. Blake Bonney said, 3D scanning is not easy. It takes a lot of setup and understanding how the scanner works. I've been scanning at work and with a professional, very expensive scanner, I can tell you the POP2 can achieve similar results, although tracking is difficult as it doesn't do texture tracking yet. A couple things to consider. This scanner uses IR depth sensors to create the point cloud. Uh, infrared is absorbed by black, so you'll, you'll have better results using a developer like D100. Uh, some people use baby powder or even paint the thing white if you can. Plan your passes and use some kind of turntable. So you don't have to walk around the thing, it won't be motorized. You could just slowly spin it by hand. I use the la Big Lazy Susan for large objects. Do multiple scans at a line in Rifle Studio. To keep tracking, in feature mode, you need to keep at least one 3D fixing feature in view of the scanner at all times. If you have a big flat surface or basic extruded surface, you can put blobs of Play-Doh on it to keep frames locked in for tracking. Use Mesh Mixer to clean up the part after. In marker mode, you want to keep at least three markers in view of the scanner at all times. The more, the better. You can also have markers all over your turntable. Mr. Metalholic brought up a couple things. He had mentioned that uh, you end up with the scan kind of building up where it shouldn't and having to go back and restart it. Uh, in the video here, you can see that it was kind of happening to me, but I just sort of continued anyway. And I would say that uh, the results were good enough. You know, it was able to figure that out. Um, he also says the included round table spins too fast. It's pretty useless unless the item is small. And how he kind of wishes there was more tracking stickers. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, my boy Blake had mentioned using blobs of Play-Doh on larger objects and then that when you're scanning with like a feature option and then that way you can use that blob as a reference so depending on what you're scanning maybe that would be a better option I've been piecing together a lot of these vids and trying to do a little thing so you can see one what I'm actually doing and two what the computer is seeing so you can see it's a lot smoother, the computer's a lot beefier, it works better than using the Wi-Fi, very clearly. It's probably not very cool of me to say this, but they really shouldn't have bothered putting Wi-Fi in this thing. They should have just kind of left it out. But maybe it was just part of the Raspberry Pi or whatever chip they used to make this thing. So I kind of get it in that sense. Uh, the uh, I'm just going to show you a quick little thing here if you've stuck around. Uh, I'm putting this piece now together with the two scans that I that I did at the different positions. And I'll throw them on there and blend them using the feature, which hardly ever works, by the way. Uh, but when it does, you can see it actually did a pretty darn good job. So maybe it's a bit easier than I thought. Anyways, thanks for sticking around. Take care.